Hey, this is Mike Durr. Listen, I wanted to go over this information for you. A lot of times when you're self-employed, an underwriter is going to require that you have a profit loss. Now, there are two situations that come up. One is when you haven't filed your income taxes for the previous year. And the other one is they, they want to see the equivalent of how you've done in any specific time during the year. And normally, um, a good category of this time period is quarters. So in, in the one that I'm going to go over today, it's for the year of 2013. But it could equally be the first quarter of 2014 so that the underwriter would want to see what your income is. Now, the source of the data that we're going to put in here could be your checkbook, it could be the receipts that you get in, and the best way to do this is to use a previous tax return if you've been self-employed for any length of time to show consistency with your um, Schedule C which is the profit loss for your business uh, when you file your uh, tax returns. So anyway what I wanted to show you is that here you've got your income. Now you could categorize your income. It doesn't. It's not necessary but you could put uh, income from one type of job or income from a different type of job. If you're in the retail business, it might be your total sales income. And then if there is a cost of goods, you see here, we put a number here, uh, materials, labor, I mean, these can be anything that you want. And then what you look at is you say, okay, this was my gross sales. These were some deductions that might have come out of there, the cost of goods or services or labor and then down here you have your gross profit okay and out of your gross profit you're gonna pay a part of your expenses so in this particular model that I use or this template that I'm uh, showing you might have had some repairs and maintenance expenses office expense wages you may have paid uh, some uh, additional contractors business phone and then again you can list you can see there's a fair list of other things that many businesses have and what they're going to do is we're going to total the expenses in this particular case they were pretty minor 11,000 that's going to be subtracted from the gross profit up here to give your net income now what an underwriter is going to do is an underwriter is going to say okay if they have a $46,000 net income then that's going to equate and you just divide that by 12 they would look at what your gross monthly income is based on that now I will tell you that most underwriters aren't going to accept just your confirmation even though you're going to sign it you're going to date it what they really want is they want your CPA or uh, some professional that's in that business and they like CPAs a lot to sign that as a confirmation because CPAs are kind of sworn to give you honest and correct information. So just be aware of that as a self-employed borrower putting together a profit loss. If, if it's a year, they're definitely going to want a CPA. If it's a quarter, they might let you sign it assuming that they have enough evidence to validate the information. And also, if it's consistent with the previous tax return, returns that uh, you provided for us. So hopefully that's helpful. And uh, again, I'm going to send you this template so you can play with it. it I think it's going to already do all the calculations for you. And you can, if you need to, I mean, if you take this and you just ditch it, I mean, you can cut these, you can add others. Let's see, let's just put internet here. You could just put marketing. And you just plug in the numbers here. Let's just put in $572. And what that'll do is that'll calculate down here, and it will automatically adjust the net income. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, if, if you have any questions, I want you to feel free to call me. Again, you can reach me at 281-348-9899. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.